This video, plus all subsequent shocks and loss of feeling in my fingers, is sponsored by KiwiCo. This is a mini Van de Graaff generator. It's a brave little terrorist able to make sparks about an inch long from two AA batteries. Ah. Just as a neutered chihuahua is to a wolf, it's merely a scaled down version of its true potential. Well, meet the wolf. This can produce almost a half a million volts, pushing out sparks that are sometimes close to a foot long. It's also great at creating sandstorms, levitating hair, and man, is it so good at irritating my neighbor's dogs. It stands close to three and a half feet tall, is fully portable, and also rechargeable, if you have the right LiPo charger. A bit of solid state tech blends with traditional design, making the power output adjustable from zero to 100%. The entire thing is custom built, and it's wicked. The first high voltage device that I ever built actually was a Van de Graaff generator. I think that was 17 years ago and it's exactly what sparked my love for plasma physics. So hopefully after you watch this video, you'll wanna go out and build one on your own as well. It's also why I'm gonna show you how I built mine, talk about why you should build one and show you exactly what they can do. Let's go. These things are disastrously fun. Van de Graaff generators are known by most as that thing you put your hand on and your hair stands up, which is a bit of a sad thing to be remembered by if you were the original device used to smash the atom, which they did in 1929. But hey, hair standing up's cool too. They're brilliant devices which can produce tens of millions of volts by capitalizing on what's called the triboelectric effect. Basically, they produce high voltage through a form of friction that relies on contact between different insulators, similar to rubbing your socks on a carpet. The triboelectric effect pumps electrons from the ground into the sphere up top. The charge builds up and you get a massive spark, or a bunch of size challenged ones. I talk more about the science later. Normally generators of this size are more of a plug and play type of situation, but I don't have the best track record with cords and my experiments tend to blow up sockets anyway, so rest in peace little buddy. And if need be, Van de Graaff generators can be built real quick and cheap and dirty in like a single evening. <laughs> this was not one such build. I mean, they're, they're super finicky devices. They need more love than an abandoned kitten. But if you build them correctly and you take your time, they produce insane voltages. They aren't as finicky. Oh God, and they're just so much fun. So what follows is a quick summary of how I built my generator and uh, a couple of frustrations I had along the way. And then we'll get to terrorizing my neighbor's dogs for everybody's entertainment. Well, as an ancient Roman proverb used to say, all foundations start with acrylic. That's why the base is made of two 13 inch discs bolted together by these beefy supports. I really like the touch of blue. The top disc has a four inch hole cut in the center and directly under it sits a ball bearing assembly. These allow a nylon roller to spin. Connected to the roller is a belt drive assembly going down to a high torque motor. I chose a 2 to 1 pulley ratio to provide even more torque. Directly underneath the roller sits metal mesh. This is used to spray electrons directly onto the belt, which is essential. Those electrons come from the earth, so the comb is connected to this grounding plate on the underside. Also in the base is a rechargeable lithium battery and a motor speed controller. Supporting the belt and top electrode is a beefy 4 inch acrylic tube. I had no idea at the time, but acrylic tubes of this size are not cheap. The top of the tube houses another ball bearing and pulley assembly. However, this pulley is made of Teflon and just kind of spins freely on its own. The belt I used is made of neoprene workout band and I cut it to three inches wide by about two feet long. I figured hot rod red would make it go faster. Right above the nylon belt sits a second metal mesh screen. It doesn't come into contact with the belt, but it sets a few millimeters above it. And its purpose is to pick up charge previously deposited on the belt, transferring that charge to this metal bar, then this wire, and into the metal sphere. The metal sphere was tricky. This is a 12 inch garden gazing ball, but it required a very specific hole cut in its base so that I could slide right over the acrylic tube. Three hours of Dremel work later and perfect fit. Now this whole upper tube assembly needed a firm connection to the base. And as a point of preference, I like to have all parts removable. So that meant no glue. And also I didn't want to bolt it into place and risk cracking the tube. So my buddy Jasper and I sketched up a mount design in CAD that would provide a firm but removable connection between the tube and the base. We then 3D printed it and it worked like a charm. It just pops right into place. My patrons will have access to the 3D files. And with that, that's the finished generator. The design turned out way better than I could have hoped. Uh, but to get it working, it was a bit 
uh, more of a complex process. You see, it didn't really work right away. I had to do some adjustments and I had to do some tweaking. For example, I originally tried a blue latex belt, which the generator really hated. In fact, it hardly produced sparks an inch long. Not exactly spectacular. I mean, the Adorbs little mini version I built makes sparks an inch long, and this beast is six times as large. Lovely. After a bit of inspection, I realized the latex belt was just too thin, and it came covered with chalk powder. So I switched over to the current neoprene belt, which was much thicker. That helped a lot, and I was getting sparks upwards of two to three inches, which really got me excited. Yeah! But a 12-inch sphere is supposed to develop 450,000 volts, so it needed more work. Next, I tweaked the upper comb a bit, adjusting it closer to the belt, which encourages easier charge transfer. The same thing was done for the lower comb. As I would have hoped, adjusting the combs made the biggest difference by far. After cranking up the power to 40-50%, this beast was pumping out 10, 11, 12 inch sparks, which is exactly what I'm going for. Uh, what I wasn't going for was the first spark literally reaching out and hitting me in the face. I think it likes me. If you're wondering about safety, well, a generator this size only produces about 1.7 joules per spark. Basically, it's not going to cause any serious damage to you beyond irritated skin. Repetitive shocking is not too healthy for your peripheral nerves, but eh, who's keeping track, right? Those with a pacemaker or heart condition should be more cautious, though. Whew, love me some sparks. But for a generator this size, that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. Prior to showing you the other crazy things it's capable of, I cannot stress the importance of self-learning enough, especially as a child. It's actually exactly how I got to where I am today. And KiwiCo sets the standard in that category. They create really cool hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to concepts in STEAM. They do monthly crates, which teach varying themes through hands-on learning that are actually designed by experts, but then tested by kids. KiwiCo offers eight subscription lines, each catering to different age groups and topics. Each box comes with all the supplies needed for that month's project, detailed instructions, plus additional educational material on the crate's theme. Turns out, my niece and nephew actually love the monthly subscriptions, so when I asked if they wanted to put together a walking robot that KiwiCo sent me from the Tinker Crate, the answer was a resounding yes. My nephew had a blast putting it together. I could see him learning engineering and visual spatial intelligence, all pretty much disguised as fun. He didn't realize it, but he was basically learning. He really enjoyed the build process, and the instructions were super clear. And here he is excitedly running off to turn it on. After some final tweaks, it provided him hours of entertainment. It was cool. Since KiwiCo has sponsored this video, you can get 50% off your first month of any crate by going to kiwico.com slash plasma channel, which is also linked in the description down below. It's a sweet deal. You know, KiwiCo and I actually have the same mission, which is to inspire people at the most influential time in their life. It's actually a huge driving force behind a lot of my videos, so I'm really excited to partner with them. Kicking off the demos, this one's legit. If you place your hand over a tray of charged sand, the high voltage DC can drive a pretty vicious sandstorm. This happens because when you bring your hand near, the sand is attracted to your hand, making it fly upwards. But once it touches your hand, it loses its charge and falls back down, and the cycle repeats. This generator also gives you the ability to charge a person up merely by pointing at them. You heard right. Here you can see me helping my little niece and nephew terrorize my dad. Electrons were streaming from my fingertip, charging him up against his will. When they learned he could be shocked, well, it was pretty much game over. And you can't show a Van de Graaff generator without raising a few hairs. I keep thinking, oh my god, this is so much better than last time. Touching the sphere, her body's negatively charged from the generator. As like charges repel and hair is able to move, each strand is repelled away from the next. She's also helping with audience retention. <laughs> because physics. By the way, sweet cow socks, huh? And after about eight hours of use, it just plugs right in for a quick charge. Speaking of physics, all of this, all these crazy effects are made possible by what's called the triboelectric effect. It's what makes Van de Graaff generators tick. The triboelectric effect is the creation of electric charge through the contact of two different materials. And these generators are basically engineered to take advantage of that. So my lower roller is made of nylon. After contacting the rubber belt, the roller becomes positively charged. That charge attracts electrons from the ground brush. 
but since the belt is in the way, electrons are sprayed onto the belt instead. The belt then cycles up and contacts the upper Teflon roller. Teflon develops a negative charge after being contacted by the belt, repelling the electrons toward the brush. Due to its proximity to the belt and sharp points, the upper comb collects these charges and deposits them onto the sphere. Hey, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing and dropping a comment down below so I can see your thoughts on this project. If you'd like to support longer, crazier projects while getting some pretty sweet perks like watching my videos a day early, please consider supporting my work on Patreon as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, you classy cats.